of the ten bloody persecutions which the Christians suffered under the heathen emperors of Rome, the first of which began in the reign of Nero, A.D. 66. The first persecution of the Christians under Nero, Anno 66. When the Jews were deprived of their power by the heathen, and their time was past, in which they had persecuted and slain the saints of God, the Lord God nevertheless suffered his church to be visited by the refining fire of persecution, namely through the power of the heathen, of whom the emperor Nero was the first tyrant. This Nero, according to the testimony of Emperor Trajan, governed the monarchy of Rome in so laudable a manner during the first five years of his reign, that never an emperor had greater praise than he, for then he was so tender-hearted that when he was asked to sign the death warrant of a highwayman, he replied, Oh, that I could not write, signifying thereby his aversion to the killing of human beings. But after the first five years he became so full of hatred, murder, and bloodshedding, that he seemed to delight in nothing more than in killing, murdering, and fearfully torturing not only malefactors, but even the saints of God, who were praised even among their enemies for their God-fearing walk and conversation. I will not mention the cruelties and tyrannies he exercised against his own friends, how he had his beloved son, Britannicus, poisoned, and his own mother, Agrippina, cut open to see the place where he had lain, how he had his faithful wife, Octavia, put to death with the sword, because she was barren, and Seneca, his faithful teacher, bled to death and poisoned. We will only speak of the persecutions and unheard-of cruelties he practiced on the beloved friends of God, namely the true Christians. To this end we will begin thus. Once desiring to see the burning of Troy, represented by its equal, he caused the city of Rome to be set on fire, and ascended a certain tower without, where he, beholding it, began to sing, Troy is on fire. After this was done, he cast the blame on the Christians, saying that they had done it, for when the Romans, very much agitated on account of the immeasurable damage and the dire calamities which had sprung from this conflagration, began to murmur greatly, he, in order to shield himself and to wreak his prejudiced hatred upon the Christians, put the whole blame on them. For this reason they were proclaimed immediately in the name of the emperor throughout the whole known world, then under the monarchy of the Romans, bloody decrees against the Christians that they should everywhere be put to death. The contents of these decrees were as follows. If any one confesses that he is a Christian, he shall be put to death without further trial as a convicted enemy of mankind. Tertullian afterwards upbraided the Roman Senate, saying, Read your own histories, and you will find that Nero was the first who raged against this sect, so he calls the Christians, which then flourished the most in Rome. In another place he says, Nero was the first who stained with blood the rising Christian faith at Rome. Shortly after this decree of Nero, a violent and unmerciful persecution of the Christians manifested itself in all the countries which were under the Roman dominion, which persecution lasted until the emperor's death. The innocent Christians were accused not only of the burning of Rome, but also of every wickedness imaginable, that they might be tortured and put to death in the most awful manner. To this the Roman Tacitus, according to the translation of J. Gisius, and not that of Phenaculius, refers, saying, Then Nero, in order to avert this report from himself, caused those called Christians by the common people to be accused and exceedingly tormented. The author of this name is Christ, who was publicly put to death under the reign of Tiberius by Pontius Pilate, the governor. Those who confessed that they were Christians were first apprehended and afterwards, by making it known themselves, a great multitude were all condemned, not so much on account of the conflagration as of the hatred in which they were held by mankind. The taking of their lives was accompanied with much mockery. They were covered with the skins of wild beasts, and then torn to pieces by dogs, or nailed on crosses, or placed at stakes and burned, 
serving as torches for the spectators when the day was over. Thus, Tacitus, a Roman himself, has sufficiently confessed, in spite of himself, as J. Gissius writes, that the Christians were innocent of the burning of Rome, but that they, notwithstanding, had to suffer on account of their name. Who the great multitudes were that perished in those awful persecutions, confessing the name of Christ even unto death, is not stated in the histories of the fathers. However, we shall content ourselves therewith that God remembers them, and that their names are written in the book of life. Nevertheless, we meet with some, though but few, names of such who suffered in that persecution in the reign of Nero, and sealed the truth of Christ with their blood and death. Of these we shall speak in the proper place. Of the unheard of cruelties Nero practiced in slaying the pious Christians. Touching the manner in which the Christians were tortured and killed at the time of Nero, A. Malinus gives the following account from Tacitus and other Roman writers, namely, that four extremely cruel and unnatural kinds of torture were employed against the Christians. Firstly, that they dressed them in the skins of tame and wild beasts, that they might be torn to pieces by dogs or other wild animals. Secondly, that they, according to the example of their Savior, were fastened alive on crosses, and that in many different ways. Thirdly, that the innocent Christians were burned and smoked by the Romans with torches and lamps under their shoulders and on other tender parts of their naked bodies, after these had been cruelly lacerated with scourges or rods. This burning was done also with shavings and faggots, they, the Christians, being tied to stakes worth half a stiver. Therefore they called the Christians Sarmentisi, that is, faggot people, and Semizi, that is, half-stiver people, because they stood fastened to half-stiver stakes, and were thus burned with the slow fire of faggots. Fourthly, that these miserable accused Christian martyrs were used as candles, torches, or lanterns to see by them at night. Of those who were burned, some were tied or nailed to stakes, and held still by a hook driven through the throat, so that they could not move the head when the pitch, wax, tallow, and other inflammable substances were poured boiling over their heads, and set on fire, so that all the unctuous matter of the human body flowing down made long, wide furrows in the sand of the theater. And thus human beings were lighted as torches, and burned as lights for the wicked Romans at night. Juvenal and Martial, both Roman poets and Tertullian, state this in a different manner, namely, that the Romans wrapped them in a painful or burning mantle, which they wound around their hands and feet in order to melt the very marrow in their bones. Furthermore, it is stated by A. Molinus from the aforementioned authors concerning those mantles that they were made of paper or linen, and having been thickly coated with oil, pitch, wax, rosin, tallow, and sulfur, were wrapped around their whole body and then set on fire. For this spectacle Nero gave the use of his gardens, and appeared himself among the people in the garb of a charioteer, taking an active part in the Caucasian games, himself standing in the circus and as charioteer guiding a chariot. These proceedings, according to the testimony of Tacitus, although it had the appearance that the Christians were punished as malefactors, who had deserved the extremest penalty, nevertheless moved the people to compassion, for they understood well enough that the Christians were not exterminated for the good of the common weal, but simply to gratify the cruelty of one man, Nero.